Before we get started, I have a quick disclaimer to make. A couple times in this video I say that Stonehenge is located in Wales when it's actually located in England. Now there's a couple of reasons that I made this mistake. The first one is I was doing a lot of research and most of the stones came from Wales and a lot of people think that the entire thing used to be located in Wales, so I got Wales stuck in my head. The other reason is, well I explain that a little further in the video. Here Dan from the future. It's part of the toolkit that Great Britain uses to keep all these tribes of England united as Great Britain, right? So, not just England, Scotland and Ireland. I'm sorry, guys, sorry. But do you get what I'm saying here? Us, us Yanks, we always get wrong. You know what I'm saying. So, yeah, sorry about that. Hope that doesn't ruin this video for you too much. Now enjoy. One of the most famously mysterious places on the planet, Stonehenge has been the subject of tons of speculation by millions of people over thousands of years. All the questions you would assume have been asked, including who built it, what they built it for, and where did they get the stones from? Now that last one science claimed to have had answered for a little while now. They said that all the stones came from Wales, where Stonehenge is located. But recently a team of scientists have overturned that when it comes to one stone, the altar stone, and they're claiming that that comes from northeast Scotland, about 450 miles away. That team of scientists also claims that humans brought it there, that it was not a glacial erratic. In other words, that a glacier did not grab that stone from Scotland and drop it off down in Wales, and then thousands of years later, people pick it up and move it. No, these scientists believe that humans did that. And that begs the question, why would humans go through the trouble of moving a stone 450 miles when it looks so similar to the ones in the region that it was mistaken by such for scientists until they did some much more close analysis. Well, I've got a couple of hypotheses about that, and if you'll bear with me, I'll throw them both at you here. Hi, my name's Dan, and welcome to the Dunking. Now, the altar stone is weird, not only in the regards that it's the only stone they're aware of from outside of the region, which, by the way, I hope this will encourage them to test the other stones a little bit better. We'll talk about that in a minute. But also, it's weird in the regards that it's the only stone that's laying down and partially buried. Other stones are laying down, but this one's, like, buried. Like, they call it the altar stone because one of the investigators has said, well, maybe this thing was used as an altar, and that name kind of stuck. It is weird, it's anomalous, and the fact that it's partially buried, seemingly, maybe even deliberately, has another stone that's fallen down on top of it, and it's from well outside of the region, does lend credence to the idea that there is something special going on here. And I have two hypotheses, as I mentioned, and my first one is basically rooted in the idea that Stonehenge was a world naval to whoever built it, or an Axis Mundi, if you prefer that term. And basically, if you're not sure what that is, it's the idea that this area was the first piece of ground on the entire planet to form. That this piece of ground, this stone, was the beginning of all of humanity. If you imagine like a belly button forming out a fetus and it growing out from that central point, it's that basic idea, but this stone is the central point that connects it to heaven. It's the connection of the spiritual power to the earth, and it's the connection of the earth to the spirit. It is the center of the world attached to the center of the universe, basically. It is a very important place. That much is understood. And this is not an idea that's unique to one or two regions or some shit that I just cooked up. Oh, no, 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 no. You'll find this all over the place. So many places that Wikipedia even has a list of the places. It's got Jerusalem and Greece and freaking Egypt and Easter Island and both Americas. It's all over the place, okay? So, we don't know that, he, that Stonehenge was used in this way. That, that I will have to admit because we don't know for sure what Stonehenge was used for. They got their differing hypotheses about calendars and whatnot, and who knows. But if it was originally intended to be an Axis Mundi or a world naval, this could explain why a stone from so far away was brought there. Bear with me, I'll explain. If the people who inhabited Scotland in those days believed in the idea of a world naval, they may well have one of their own. They probably would. They would think that their center of the world was in their own backyard. Seems kind of funny how it always works out that whatever culture you're talking about, the center of the world tends to be right in their own backyard. But we'll talk about that in a different video. That's just a funny aside. But the thing here to pay attention to is 
if Scotland had its own world naval and the people from Wales and the people from Scotland fought and the people from Wales won, they may well take a chunk of the Scottish World Naval, destroy the whole World Naval setup they've got there, want to be Stonehenge or whatever, and take an important stone and relocate it back to Wales and say, the center of your universe is in our world, bitch. You're ours. It's a way of consolidating power in future generations. It's a way of saying to those with very spiritual beliefs, the center of the attachments here, it's a way of cutting the thread of their own old religions. It's a very real way to take the culture and incorporate it into their own and force them to kind of cowtail and jump into their thing. And I know this sounds all speculative and old Dan likes to, to spitball about psychology. He's off in the fucking weeds over here. But now if you know anything about the history of the region, though, the more recent history, you'll be like, oh, he's he, he's got a touchstone for this. <laughs> touchstone, see what I did there? Because this is all kinds of similar to what happened millennia later when the stone used as part of the Scottish inauguration ceremony was taken to London from Perth in the 13th century. The De Stone of Destiny, as it's called. It was used in London in the inauguration ceremonies for British monarchs ever since. By stealing the sacred stone and using it on their own monarchs, the British made it very clear to the Scots who was in charge. In fact, in 1996, the Crown returned the Stone of Destiny to the castle at Perth, but they still take it to London for their own inaugural ceremonies. It's like some weird rich European game of got your nose. Ha, oh, I got your stone. Oh, no, I don't. No, oh, I got your stone. Oh, no, I don't. You can't crown your king. Yes, you can. 800 years they've been doing this crap, though, right? And it's part of the toolkit that Great Britain uses to keep all these tribes of England united as Great Britain. Right? So, not just England, Scotland and Ireland. I'm sorry, guys. Sorry. But you get what I'm saying here. Us, us Yanks, we always get that shit wrong. You know what I'm saying. Um, but my point here is, it's not unheard of. What I'm saying here isn't some crazy idea that I just dreamt up in a fever dream. This is something that we do see happening in the world today. And it is the kind of thing, I mean, it's been, like I say, 800 years and they're still doing it. So it's, it's, it is the kind of thing that um, does seem to be somewhat effective. But that's assuming that these guys were hating on each other and that they were fighting with each other. What if we assume that they were working with some degree of cooperation? And that's where we get into my second hypothesis. It's possible that differing tribes on that island consolidated their power into like one somewhat super tribe for a minute or whatever, and that Stonehenge was a site of them bringing their different stones from the nearby region or from all over the isles and showing that they were part of that tribe. Now again, we could I would like to see them test these stones more now that we have an idea that these aren't exactly like we thought all these years. But if they do these tests and find out that more of these stones are from different varied regions, well, that would really bear out this hypothesis because it would be very realistic that a tribe from, you know, 100 miles away or 50 miles away would drag a stone over there and be like, we're part of the group and it's a show of power. And in that regards, it would be the opposite of the last hypothesis as far as the Scots, the, the people living where Scotland is now getting their ass whooped, would be quite the opposite. The people living where Scotland is now would have been quite powerful with their ability to move a stone 450 miles. They would show that, you know, we, we, we got some shut spot here. And then, of course, that's assuming that then it, it fell down and was partially buried and other stones fell over time. And, you know, as it fell into disrepair and the treaty or alliance or whatever had just gone to crap. And again, this is speculative, but this kind of thing does make sense, again, with the same kind of idea. You, by holding that stone in, in England, they're saying, you know, to, they're, they're forcing Scotland or... or not forcing, but they are kind of, you know, saying that we're, we're one people, we're a group, right? So this place where a bunch of people potentially put stones that were shared together could be a way of saying that we are one group. It's weird how people put so much emphasis on just random ass rocks back in the day, but my God, they sure seemed to venerate the damn things, didn't they? So freaking weird. Even the Ark of the Covenant is supposed to have had some rocks running around it, so just regular old rocks, well, carved on by the finger of God, but regular old rocks. So if the scientist's assumption that these things were moved by humans is correct, this is quite the mystery. Not only is why a big deal, which I think I've given you a couple of good reasons as to why, but how would be a big deal because 
This was 450 miles by a people that were not nearly as advanced as their contemporary Egyptians and stuff, right? And the Egyptians were moving stones that were bigger, 25 tons instead of 6 tons. But 450 miles is a very long way. And if you have a people that are more primitive, sorry archaeologists, I know you hate that term, not only do they have less technology at their disposal, this is also going to hit them in their GDP. They're going to have less people working the fields, less hunters out in the forest catching game, less engineers working on better irrigation and better homes and all that stuff. All of this stuff is applied to the problem of moving one big rock hundreds of miles for no apparent purpose. So the why part is kind of a mystery. Like I say, I think I've given you a couple of good explanations and I hope that some of those sound reasonable to you. But the how part is also a huge mystery here, not because it's like they needed high technology to do it, but man, these are Ben's proverbial butt flap wearing dudes. These guys were very low tech for that time even. So this is pretty impressive. So maybe in one day in the future, we'll discuss specifically how they moved stones at Stonehenge, but it will probably take a little more information out there for me to be able to say a whole lot, to be honest with you. This is already kind of getting into a bit of speculation without too many touchstones. Huh? I'm going to recycle that pun, baby. But that would be kind of way off into the weeds. But, you know, I want to thank you guys for watching this far. We'll talk about Stonehenge again in the future, I'm very sure. I appreciate my Patreon supporting me so much here. Uh, we got more videos coming for you, at least until school starts up. I'm going to keep cranking them out as fast as I can. And then when uh, life starts making me spend more time with my kid taking care of stuff again, well, you know, you'll have to deal with only a couple of videos a week from me or something like that. Well, thanks very much for watching. You guys have a great evening. We will see you next time.